When it comes to the topic of entertainment, a big word that comes to my mind is copycat. Especially when we're talking about the topic like anime. Uh, two animes that really come to my mind are Yu-Gi-Oh! and Pokemon. Both animes came out in 1996 and it was crazy growing up. In my household, like, I was alone being on Team Yu-Gi-Oh! and my sisters, uh, they were all on Team Pokemon. They always said that Yu-Gi-Oh! is just a copycat of it, only they use cards to make holograms while Pokemon has real monsters. But, you know what? I liked Yu-Gi-Oh! more than I liked Pokemon. Say what? I know it made a lot of people angry when I just said that. I'm sorry, but that's how I feel. Anyway, Yu-Gi-Oh! I will say that Yu-Gi-Oh! did go really close to exactly copying Pokemon with their capsule monsters. Uh, they had those little capsules that had the monsters in them that they would throw and the monsters would appear in real life, not just holograms. So, yeah, Yu-Gi-Oh! and Pokemon really come close in copycat territory, but... What I want to talk about is copycats in video games, especially The Legend of Zelda. In February 1986, we got our first Legend of Zelda game. And this is back when there was no Legend of Zelda uh, side story, side title to it, like Ocarina of Time or whatever you do. It was just Legend of Zelda. And this game was amazing. It was so cool to have this open world game where you have this little kid with a sword and shield uh, going through this side-scroller game fighting all these pixelized enemies of what they are today back then in the 80s was amazing. Uh, fighting the Octoroks, fighting Bacoblins, exploring dungeons, buying things from shops, fighting bosses of certain dungeons. It was something that was just eye-opening and worldwide just accepted as one of the best games that Nintendo have, has ever created. And in 1991, the gaming company Sega created the exact copycat of a game which was called Golden Axe Warrior. I don't know why Sega chose to make the Golden Axe Warrior. Like, I get that Sega and Nintendo are enemies, they're rival game companies that have been rivals for years trying to do outdo each other, and maybe, uh, like, in the 90s with the whole Zelda craze going on, it, uh, Sega was starting to go under. Maybe Sonic the Hedgehog wasn't doing so good. I, I don't know why, but with the Golden Axe Warrior, it brought nothing original. I mean, with The Legend of Zelda, you got Link going through these woods and going through this world, open world, fighting these enemies with a sword and shield. With Golden Axe Warrior, you have the exact same thing. A knight, oh, it uses a shield and an axe instead of a sword, but he's fighting pigs and blocking arrows with his shields. And honestly, it's... If you've played Zelda, you have played the Golden Axe Warrior. The dungeons are not, are just the same exploration like they had in Zelda. The boss fights are the same in both Zelda and Golden Axe Warrior. And plus, the difference in the music is just unbelievable. I mean, with Zelda, it has this great exploration feeling to it, like you want to go out into the world of Hyrule, explore Hyrule and slice up some Bacoblins, explore these dungeons, actually go out into the world. And with Golden Axe Warrior, their music is just seems to be on a loop that honestly is n just gets to be a headache after a while. Like, yeah, it goes like a Pokemon thing where the music will change from town to town. Also, Zelda does that. 
but it's just not near as captivating as the music in Zelda. Let's just take a clip from each of these games, Zelda and Golden Axe Warrior from the 80s and the Golden Axe Warrior from the 90s, and uh, just listen to them. I can definitely tell a difference. It's a big difference, right? Even though they both seem to be on a loop, Zelda has the captivating, enticing exploration music to it, while Golden Axe Warrior just has a uh, quest music to it that, honestly, <laughs> really becomes a headache after a while. So, even though Golden Axe Warrior is a complete copy of it, I've never actually played it, but I don't think I want to, just because I've played the 1986 Zelda. It's hard, but I actually enjoyed it. And I feel like if I play Golden Axe Warrior, I'm just playing Zelda all over again. So I gotta give the win in this to 1986 Zelda for sure. So yeah, in the 80s and 90s, we got... The Golden Axe Warrior straight up copy of Legend of Zelda. And now, in the late 2017, 2018, we got the game winning award, Breath of the Wild, which was copied by, personally, not my favorite at all, Horizon Zero Dawn. Okay. This one might be a little hard for me to comprehend. Like, both of these games came out in 2017, and uh, Zero Dawn came out in February in 2017, while Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild came out in March 2017. And development for Zero Dawn was started in 2011, with development of Breath of the Wild being started in 2013. So you're probably thinking, Breath of the Wild totally stole everything from Zero Dawn. Well, I have to say, even though development for Breath of the Wild started two years after development for Zero Dawn started, and came out a month after Zero Dawn came out, I have to say that even though they may seem similar, open world exploration, fighting robots, the gameplay of it is very different. I feel like Link's backstory in Breath of the Wild is much more intense than Aloy's in Zero Dawn. For example, Link's backstory is that basically he's been in a coma for a hundred years and after he wakes up he sees the land of Hyrule basically destroyed thanks to Calamity Ganondorf. And he's going through all these different challenges to learn these abilities with the Sheikah Slate, he's fighting these Bacaldas again in the open world. He's taming horses. There's not just a Pona. He can get any horse he wants. He can explore anywhere he goes. He can climb mountains. He can swim up waterfalls with his Zorda's tunic. Exploration in this game is a very, very incredible. But if you compare that to exploration in Zero Dawn, it almost seems limited. I mean, uh, I can justify this. I like Aloy's background because she's like uh, growing up with her adoptive father and she's hated by other little kids of different villages because they're like basically banished people. And um, I like how Aloy kind of learns of her origin by falling into that bunker and you're learning about all this technology. But I have to say, I enjoyed Link's exploration of different shrines more at the beginning of this game. 
But I will have to say that Zero Dawn does have that uh, one scene with Aloy growing up and training with her adoptive father, which definitely gives me Son of Man vibes from Tarzan, which I thought was awesome. Son of Man! So even with Zero Dawn's open world exploration with Aloy being able to change her outfits like Link can, be able to visit different villages like Link can, fighting different robots that have like dinosaurs and stuff, which was cool, it also felt very, very restrictive. I mean... I did not enjoy the gameplay of this. It was fun to raid like different outposts and stuff using weapons and other things like that, but like be to be able to climb mountains and stuff, there were certain markers that Aloy was only able to climb the mountains by following them, and with Breath of the Wild, Link can go up to a mountain or whatever and just start climbing it no matter what. He'll reach the top is as long as he has enough stamina. But with Zero Dawn, if there's no markers near the top of the mountain, Aloy has to give up climbing it. So with even though Zero Dawn and Breath of the Wild are very, very similar with the open world and combat in this, uh, I have to give the win to Breath of the Wild because the open world, even though both games are very open world, they are not near as restrictive in Breath of the Wild as they are in Zero Dawn. Even though Zero Dawn was pretty fun, I gotta give this win to Breath of the Wild. Just story-wise was more interesting to me, even though Zero Dawn has a good story to it. But yeah, more enjoyable Breath of the Wild. Plus, it beat Zero Dawn in Game of the Year awards. So you gotta give it that. The last two games that I want to talk about are actually uh, by the same gaming company, Nintendo, and in the same uh, game series, The Legend of Zelda, which are The Legend of Zelda, Ocarina of Time, and The Legend of Zelda, Majora's Mask. And uh, I get that Majora's Mask is supposed to be like a direct sequel to Ocarina of Time, and there are hints to it. I mean, you got that one scene when Link gets the Ocarina of Time back from the Skull Kid when he's that Deku scrub. You got the scene of the memory of Link leaving Zelda, heading out into Hyrule to go look for Navi. But I feel like they honestly dropped the ball when they were creating Majora's Mask. Number one being the whole three-day time loop thing. I've actually made a whole video of why I don't like Majora's Mask. You can check that out too. I'll leave a link down below actually if you want to check that out. But I just, I get that it took two years to make Majora's Mask. I, they were probably like on a time crunch or something to get another Zelda game out. I don't know. But they took the same format of everything from Ocarina of Time and they kind of flipped it upside down with Majora's Mask. Which, for a lot of people, it seemed to work. Like, if you ask... Uh, some people, they'll say they love Majora's Mask. Other people, they say it sucks. I'm one that says it sucks, but there are the, some things they copied that they improved on. Like, um, like one thing that I didn't like about it was how small Termina was. Like, going outside of Clock Town, you're expecting to go on this big adventure, like, how Link is after he first leaves Gokuri Forest for the first time. You see how big Hyrule is? Except for this, Hyrule, er, not Hyrule, Termina is just split into four areas with the Ocean Canyon, Swamp, and Mountain, Ice Mountain, whatever. And it's just really bringing it to a low that they copied so much of Ocarina of Time and brought it into a game which really took away a lot of the elements that I enjoyed from the first one. Getting 
that the, uh, the game honestly seemed the tedious at points too. I mean, uh, I think there's 24 masks you can collect in total, and honestly, getting all those masks is just bragging rights to get the fierce deity mask because you don't even need it in the final battle with Majora's Mask. That's what I hated about Majora's Mask. The battle with Majora's Mask is just boring. I mean, but you can beat it as Young Link without taking damage. It might take a little longer, but you can beat him without damage. And if you really want to beat the final boss fast without taking any damage, use Fear Stadium Mask. But really, for gameplay, you only need like 8 masks for the whole game. It was just a tedious thing I think they thought of to bring the game out longer. Because if they just like relied on those 8 masks, it'd be a pretty short game. I'm not going to say that all of Majora's Mask was awful. I mean, the ocean part was really fun. Becoming the Zora and to be able to swim into the ocean the way that Link does to be able to fight enemies under the water in this game, that was awesome. And in Ocarina of Time, uh, swimming was never one of Link's greatest assets. He, like, just putting on the iron boots. That's how he, he would get below it and fighting in it, like in the water temple. He was never good at it. So, Majora's Mask definitely improved in the water combat in this. And uh, I did like the water temple in Majora's Mask, even though a lot of people seem to hate that one. I enjoyed it. I thought it was a lot funner than the water temple in Ocarina of Time. So, Majora's Mask does have some things that I did enjoy, but they're... The fact that it was like almost a complete copy of the character, well it was a complete copy, only their personalities were changed in Majora's Mask compared to Ocarina of Time. That's what bothered me the most. Also the three day thing, unless you learn how to slow down time, that's what I hated because time goes by really fast in Zelda games. But yeah. If I would have to choose between Majora's Mask and uh, the Ocarina of Time, I have to go with Ocarina of Time just 100%. Even though Link has the quest of saving the whole town in Majora's Mask, Link has the quest of saving the whole world of Hyrule in Ocarina of Time. That's why I love it, even because Ocarina of Time feels like a game where Link has more on his shoulders by saving the whole world, whereas he's just saving a town from a collapsing moon in Majora's Mask. So, hands down, I'm picking Ocarina of Time over Majora's Mask. Horrible copy they made from Ocarina of Time, which was amazing to a shit game, in my opinion. Anyway, yeah, Ocarina of Time, 100% better. Anyway guys, that is the end of the video. Thank you so much for watching. If you agree with me with what I've said, how these games have copied Zelda, uh, just leave a comment of what you thought of that. If you liked Golden Axe Warrior, if you liked Zero Dawn, if you liked Majora's Mask, I have nothing against those games. Well, I haven't played Golden X Warrior, but Zero Dawn and Majora's Mask, they can be fun games. Especially if you've never played open world games before, give those a try, because those are fun. Anyway, that is what I'm gonna be, that's what I've talked about for this video. I hope you thought it was at least informative. Please don't go hating on me for this video. Uh, it was a video that a uh, fan of mine had been emailing me to do for a while, so I finally decided to do it. So this video is a shout out to them. Hope they like it. Anyway, guys, please give the video a thumbs up and subscribe. And I'll see you next time.